Well, this is Blaze, the Unified Fathers for Life, and I'm sitting here. What room are we sitting in? Well, first of all, I'm sitting with the Executive Director, Charmaine Jefferson. Yes, hi, how are you, Blaze? And we're here at the, tell them a little bit where we are first, where we tell them what room we're in. Well, you're at the California African American Museum, and you are in our African American Journey West exhibition. It's the permanent exhibition of, the, of items out of our collection. The theme of which is this notion of the African Americans having come across the sea, some very few voluntarily, etc. And it's done through art and real artifacts. But today, we took out a few items, created a special space, so that you could have some of the items that you see behind me and the artist, artist Lane, with us to talk about the work she did with Rosa Parks. You know, I, I found the majority of that, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little more, how'd you make a connection like that? Well, Artist Lane is in our collection. Yes, she is in our collection. And she, first off, your, your listeners, should, viewers should know that she is such an ex gracious and extraordinarily generous woman and a magnificent artist, both as a painter, a sculptor, etc. And her work is in our collection. We have purchased a work from her. She recently came to us and uh, and asked us if we wanted to put up a work of hers on loan, which we are doing now, her emerging man. We're in the process of trying to see if we can come up with a series that is six pieces on the emerging man, and if we can do it, it will be awesome. If we need people to break their piggy banks and make us help us do this one. See, now, you know what, I, I was just thinking, um, first of all, I've never been to a museum where I was so thoroughly entertained on such a diverse level. I mean, I'm trying to film and I'm all over the place. Thank you. Uh, starting outside where you have all the, uh, what, this is, first of all, this, tell them what this is called. This is our In the Spirit of Kwanzaa Day for our Target Sundays at Camp. So every first Sunday of the month, we do a specially themed program. This is our last one for this year. And so, of course, we wanted people to really get into the principles of, of, of Kwanzaa. And at the same time, we were already planning on honoring Rosa Parks before she passed. And so, of course, when she passed, you know, you, you, you're so stunned by it and you almost think you shouldn't do it. And then we thought, oh, no, how could we not? And, of course, a lot of people are paying tribute to her. But we had the special honor of two things, a relationship with Artist Lane. And so when you look at the extraordinary bust of Rosa Parks that she was commissioned to do, the Congressional Medal of Honor, which I believe is over my... Uh, I, over this these, these works are here and going to remain here for a while or what? We brought them and we rearranged the gallery just a little bit so people could be able to see the, the work that Rosa Parks did. At this did point, the you're going to hold the mic. Okay. I'll give you all of the details, but I will tell you, follow the Congressional Medal of Honor uh, was commissioned by President Bill Clinton of Artist Lane to do because they presented Rosa Parks with a Congressional Medal of Honor. And then there is a work behind me that is a piece that Artist Lane had created uh, to depict this notion of Rosa Parks sort of rising and emerging through life and her relationship, frankly, to the Statue of Liberty and that sense of freedom. And then you have on the other side of me a work that Rosa, that Artist Lane created called The Beginning. And yes, on the bus. And it, it is signed by Rosa Parks and Artist Lane. It's in our collection. And yes, actually people, if they purchase it, proceeds go to help support the Rosa Parks Institute. And then we have farther to my right, a maquette of the bust that Artist Lane created that is in the Smithsonian and in the library in Alabama. Now it's a trick photography on back. <laughs> well, you know, this is really fantastic. And, you know, since I've been doing this, I've studied a little more about museums than ever before. And I discovered that a lot of museums have a particular intent. And I wanted to get into some of the intent of you. And I discovered a place, I don't want to misquote it, where it says something like, prior to the passage, the, the crossover passage, and we began this Amer African American thing. Our tribalism was always about nature, always about family, and so on, and so on, and so on. And we might be reminded by some of the um, artwork here. Is that correct, or? Well, what what we've done here is, our mission is the art and history and culture of African Americans, and uh, and we re research, preserve, we collect, we interpret those 
variations. If you think about who we are, that means it's everything. It, it could be music, it could be history, it could be civil rights, it could be legal, it could be science. But, it, but what we wanted to do in our permanent gallery that we're sitting in is find a way to not only display some of the items that we have, because we've got about 3,500, so they're clearly not all on display, but to do so in a way that was both artifacts from Africa as well as interpretation of our experience. So if you look around, well, if you look around the room, you've got a, a Bill Pajot showing that sort of New Orleans spirit in the in the funeral marches. You've got uh, a, a we've got some work from Ken Renhart, who was an actor who was always being cast in any part other than black. Uh, we've got Ella Fitzgerald, Mayor Tom Bradley. Ella Fitzgerald, gowns. Yes. Unbelievable gowns she had. Yeah, well, right over my shoulder, we've got Bill Spiller, who was one of the first to play in the PGA, you a know, black I man. Say, I put a picture on him. Hold on, because he looked just like Michael Jordan. Doesn't he? I mean, when I came in here, let me just. You're not the only one. I said, because I figured Michael Jordan was playing golf. Let me get closer for our viewers. I said, like, this is a guy that was like, Bill Spiller. His name was William, and they called him Bill Spiller. And he was one of the first to break the Jim Crow, um, the Jim Crow problems in playing golf. And he was a great golf player. Well, his family made donations to us. So when you think about migrating and moving around. Well, hold on, wait, let's stick on that. So, his, so people's who, let's say, family who inherit these types of pieces often, thanks, oftentimes will donate them to museums. How does that work? Yes, you can make... If, I mean, if I got something in my attic from my grandfather who happened to be somebody, it'd probably be better for me to donate it and put it on display. Absolutely. I mean, if you, you know, museums do one of two things. They acquire work because they buy it or someone donates it to them. The larger institutions have acquisition funds. We rarely have acquisition funds, so we really are dependent upon people wanting to make donations to us. And because we're an institution that's art history and culture and it's art and artifacts, etc., it means if you've got a 200-year-old Bible that's been handed down through the generations, part of what we're here to do is to tell the stories of our people. If you have, um, my goodness, that no one ever saw Charles White work, you might want to donate it to us. And then they end up, donate it or they, put it on display for a couple of years. Exactly, either. exactly. And we borrow from people for yeah. exhibitions because we curate our own and we borrow exhibitions from other institutions. So the real point is to say that even if you don't have financial resources to give to a, a museum like ours, you may very well have something that represents the art and history and culture of African Americans that we ought to consider. And when people are a member of this, this museum, technically they are a member of the black race. So. They are, and it doesn't matter who they are because we are not just an institution that's only for African Americans. It's an institution like your, that's uh, from a perspective, African American yeah. perspective that we present so many things. Okay. Yes. And the other thing I want to touch upon, I mentioned to you earlier, one or two people were saying they were unaware of the programs we have for children. Every time I've come here, I've seen families and children. So maybe we could talk a little to the public about what opportunities there are for the children to come and get involved and get exposure to lectures and literature and painting and things like that that you do here. Well, we do workshops all the time, and we would highly suggest that people check our website. Um, because if you do, then you can see some of the workshops we're doing, and they may be centered around making your own... We've got an exhibition going up, a Milton Bowen's exhibition. It's spoken word, and it's real colorful, and it's very expressive. Well, we want kids to learn to, to do that, so we'll teach them and, and let them explore that in workshops. Our Target Sunday program, we've got creative workshops out there right now that kids can participate I spoke in. I to the lady with the, with the quilts and the yeah, gentleman doing table. the mask. Yeah. People, so for me, for some reason, I had a misconception of what this building represented years ago. Maybe it was drab years ago, because my experience was drab years ago. But now that I've come, it's so village-like. And I want to know, what is your intention for, for the next year? That, that is our vision. This is a place that we want people to feel empowered that it belongs to them. Mm -hmm. Because we represent so many divergent points of view, voices, mm -hmm. etc. 
we're going to put work on the wall. We're going to put our work on the wall. But if, I on, if we only do that, then we haven't totally told our story. So I got to bring it to life. I need you to come back. I want you to come back. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell other people. So for us, the dream is about drumbeat. Mm -hmm. It's about people somehow or another feeling this place personally. Let's, that let's, theirs, let's, give, let's give that website because it was so people friendly. Oh, thank you. It's www.caamuseum.org.